Mr. President, I come to the floor today to uh, discuss the many ways that Obamacare continues to negatively affect Americans. Yesterday, the Washington Post published an article exposing yet another problem with healthcare.gov, and I'd like to just share a couple of excerpts from that. The article begins, and I quote, tens of thousands of people who discover that healthcare.gov made mistakes as they were signing up for a health plan are confronting a new roadblock. The government cannot yet fix the errors. Roughly 22,000 Americans have filed appeals with the government to try and get mistakes corrected. Those mistakes, according to the Post, include being overcharged for health insurance, being directed to the wrong insurance program, or being wrongly denied coverage. So what's the status of those appeals? Well, the Post reports, and I quote again, for now, the appeals are sitting, untouched, inside a government computer, and an unknown number of consumers who are trying to get help through less formal means by calling the healthcare marketplace directly are told that healthcare.gov's computer system is not yet allowing federal workers to go into enrollment records and change them. So let me summarize here, Mr. President. 22,000 Americans are either without insurance or are paying too much for insurance as a result of mistakes made by the Federal Health Exchange. Healthcare.gov contains no appeal process. Attempts to find recourse by other means have been unsuccessful. And the administration's response is basically tough luck. President Obama was interviewed by Fox News' Bill O'Reilly this weekend. One of the topics they covered was healthcare.gov's problems. The president said, and I quote, the good news is that right away we decided how we're going to fix it. It got fixed within a month and a half. It was up and running. And now it's working the way it's supposed to. Let me repeat that, Mr. President. The President of the United States said, now it's working the way it's supposed to. Well, tell that to the 22,000 people wondering why there's no appeals process on the website or why their paper appeals are stuck in a computer system at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services where the Post says the appeals process is currently stopped because the part of the computer system that would allow agency workers to read and handle appeals has not been built, end quote. When Bill O'Reilly asked President Obama about the website problems, the president responded by saying that, and I quote again, I don't think anybody anticipated the degree of problems that you had on healthcare.gov, end quote. Well, Mr. President, that's not an excuse. It was the president's job to ensure that people in the administration were anticipating the problems that would occur. And the president owes the American people an explanation of why he didn't because this isn't just a story of bureaucratic incompetence. It's the stories of the tens of thousands of individual Americans who are suffering as a result of the website glitches and who are wondering how they'll afford their health care under Obamacare. Americans like Addie Wilson, whose story is highlighted in the Post article. Addie is a 27-year-old who makes just $22,000 a year. She was sure she would qualify for a subsidy on the exchanges. And she was absolutely right, she did. Only healthcare.gov didn't tell her that. So Addie phoned one of the call centers which told her to sign up at the more expensive price she was quoted and to appeal the decision later. Since her old insurance plan was on its way out, she needed surgery in January, that's what she did. Now she's stuck paying $100 more a month than she should be paying along with a deductible that's $4,000 higher than it should be. That too high of a deductible is a particular concern since she incurred huge hospital bills in January when she was forced to have surgery. If she doesn't get relief from the appeals process, she could end up paying $4,000 in medical bills that she shouldn't have to pay and can't afford. But Mr. President, it's not just the website that's driving up Americans' medical bills. It's the law itself. As awful as Addie's situation is, at least maybe she will get help eventually. For millions of other Americans, their high deductibles are no mistake. For too many Americans on and off the exchanges, the reality of the so-called Affordable Care Act has been a staggering increase in health care costs. Some family plans on the exchanges carry deductibles of almost $13,000. That's more than some families will spend this year on their mortgage. Upper income families may be able to absorb these costs and some limited help is available for lower income families. But what middle-class family can afford $13,000 a year 
in medical costs. Too many families around the country will be putting on hold their plans to buy a home or send their kids to college because they have to vo devote every spare dollar to paying their health care bills. And on top of crippling cost hikes, many of these same families are facing the loss of doctors and hospitals as insurance companies narrow their networks in response to Obamacare's mandates. Mr. President, so far I've only mentioned the personal devastation Obamacare is causing, but Obamacare isn't just affecting families' pocketbooks. It's affecting the economy as a whole. In response to Obamacare's burdensome mandates and new taxes, businesses are cutting employees' hours, declining to hire new employees, and abandoning their plans to expand. And that means fewer jobs available for millions of Americans looking for work and fewer opportunities for career growth and advancement. In fact, uh, just this morning, Mr. President, uh, there was a story, the Wall Street Journal, and it references the Congressional Budget Office report that estimates now that the impact of this law through the year 2024 will mean two and a half million fewer jobs. Two and a half million in job losses as a result of Obamacare. It's so much so that you see many of the very labor unions who supported and wholeheartedly endorsed Obamacare when it passed coming out now and, and, and saying that it's a sad irony, and I'm quoting here from a letter that went out from several uh, of the labor unions, it would be a sad irony indeed if the signature legislative accomplishment of an administration committed to reducing income inequality cut living standards for middle income and low wage workers. The letter went on to say that the Obamacare law undermines fair market competition and that they are bitterly disappointed. This comes from labor unions in this country, Mr. President, who wholeheartedly endorsed this law when it passed several years ago. Well, Mr. President, the American people have endured five years of economic stagnation and Obamacare has been making things worse. The President has called for 2014 to be a year of action, but I've seen no evidence that he has any plans to address the causes of our sluggish growth or provide relief for the millions of Americans struggling with crippling health care costs. Republicans have a number of health care proposals, from comprehensive plans like that proposed by Senators Coburn, Hatch, and Burr, to common sense ideas to lower costs by allowing businesses to pool together, to negotiate lower rates, and by allowing insurance companies to sell health care plans across state lines, to promote more competition, give people more choices. If the President really wanted to make health care more affordable and accessible, he'd abandon this government takeover of one-sixth of our economy and work with Republicans to pass real health care reform. But Mr. President, given the President's record, I'm not holding my breath that that's going to happen. But at the very least, at the very least, I hope the President will see his way to supporting bipartisan proposals to improve the economy and to open new jobs and opportunities to struggling Americans. Just last Friday, the Obama State Department released its fifth environmental impact study on the Keystone XL pipeline. Once again, the review found that the pipeline would have no significant impact on global carbon emissions. Senators and representatives of both parties support this job-creating measure. It is high time for the President to approve the pipeline and to open up the 42,000 shovel-ready jobs it will support. He should also pick up the phone that he keeps talking about to call the Senate Majority Leader and to tell him to stop obstructing bipartisan trade promotion authority legislation that would help American farmers, ranchers, entrepreneurs, and job creators gain access to a billion new consumers around the globe. The president and the majority leader held a White House meeting yesterday, we're told, yet an aide reported that there was no discussion of the majority leader's anti-trade comments last week. Well, Mr. President, given this legislation's importance for increasing American jobs, it's difficult to understand why the president wouldn't bring this bill up at that meeting. Finally, Mr. President, the President of the United States also should join the vast bipartisan majority in the Senate that supports repeal of the job-killing Obamacare medical device tax, which is forcing American companies to send jobs overseas. The President will be visiting the Democrats' retreat tomorrow, which would be a prime opportunity for him to get on the same page with his party in support of these bipartisan measures. Mr. President, Republicans are ready and willing to work with the President and with Democrats and we hope that we will have willing partners to do the things 
that are necessary to get people back to work, to create jobs, to grow our economy, and to help provide and build a better future for middle class families in this country. The American people shouldn't have to wait any longer. Mr. President, I yield the floor.